Okay, back on this. I've made quite a few, uh, well, I've made quite a few. I've made some changes on this since you saw it last. I uh, fixed it to where it's going to be permanently uh, attached to my base. The back's been carved out. I made a slight change up here on the uh, neck. It used to come up to about across here. Well, I carved it back so it goes around his kerchief. That would be more natural. And one of the reasons I did that is that, will, that allowed me to lower his head. Okay? So what I thought we'd do today is we'll carve the uh, braid. Not the braid. That's the word I'm thinking of. The fringe on the side of his shoulder here. And we would try to uh, basically finish the body so we can move on with this. All right. So let me take him apart and show you how I attached him here. I drilled uh, a couple of holes in the back of the piece here where it's thick. All right. And these little pegs will be epoxied into that. No, I'm not going to bother taking that on. Anyway, it's going to be epoxied into here and in, in, into the base. And the way I match my holes up is uh, generally when you drill a hole, there's going to be some uh, sawdust left down in the bottom of the hole. And if you're very careful, you turn your carving over or whatever your drilling hole is, you'll see some of it dump out. But then you can take it and you can put it where you want that hole to go, real gently like. And then take a something, not not something really here. This is actually better. There goes my peg. And slightly tap the carving. And it will leave sawdust. See that right there? There's a perfect impression of a hole. So what I do is I'll take my pencil and I'll draw around that hole. And that'll tell me exactly where to drill my hole. And then, after that, you know, you can cut your pegs. And you, you don't want the pegs showing, naturally. And you put them in there like that, and see, it just makes a perfect match. And I carved a little bit away on the bottom down here. I didn't want this resting on the base. I like things to look like they're floating. You know, they're part of the base, but yet they're separate, if that makes any sense. And I think, you know, I've been experimenting with where to place his head to create the most interest. And I think it's going to be just about right there. Not a lot, just a little. That'll let a braid hang down here and another braid to come right off his shoulder, which will frame his body really nice, okay? So again, let's separate him here. Get rid of my pegs. Move that out of the way. So the first thing we're going to do is do this fringe. Get my trusty knife here. Judy's got that camera so close, it's going to bite me. And I've drawn all my little lines here, where the fringe goes. <laughs> Judy, I can't even get the knife in there to carve. All right, and then just, you know, at an angle. just. Follow down the uh, the thing, and at first, first let me show you here. I forgot to do this. I always put a little stabbing cut at the end of each fringe. back 
find the line again. Need to redraw those lines and come back and carve the other side. And then just slowly work my way down. Just like that. And after I get that part cut, I look for my let's see, I've got two of these little gouges. Where's the other one at? Probably right in front of me somewhere. I hate that when you look and you look and you look and you can't find the damn thing and then you look one more time and there it is sitting right in front of you. Well, it's got a handle like that. Do you see it sitting anywhere? I don't know which there one it is. There it is. See, I told you. Right in front of me. And then I take this gouge and I just follow up along that fringe like that. And we just keep going. Well, Oklahoma's going to open up. By that I mean people are starting to get fed up with having to stay home because of this stupid Chinese virus and that's what the hell it is. It's a Chinese virus. They ought to cancel all the money that we owe those jerks over there that foisted this thing on the world. Sorry. A little politics mixed in with my carving here. Almost there. Don't worry if one fringe is fatter than the other one. It's okay.
spot sometimes you get a spot like that so just come back and carve it a little deeper and it'll clear it up these little areas up here go ahead and Bring your mark all the way up to the end. Now when we burn burn this edge here, which I will later on. That'll clean all that up. So after you do that, come down here and just take out a little wedge. Clean it up. Clean it up as you go. That way you don't have to come back and address it later on. And again, once we come back and burn these areas, these will all really look a lot, 100% better. Now this part right here is going to be the bead strip that's on his sleeve. Okay? And then this is just the leather of the coat. And uh, what I like to do get in these areas is rough these edges up like that carve wrinkles into the leather give it some texture with the curve start with the you just don't want everything flat
you yeah, it looks a hundred percent better than the way it was before. Just be careful not to mess your detail up. It's pretty, pretty nice now, huh? Across there. On the beading here, like I mentioned once before, beading becomes real stiff. Now it does get bends in it, but you'll never see a, you know, an, an angled fold, fold in this stuff. So, like this one here, it's curved this way. Well, I really don't want that. I want it curved to where it looks flat. So it curves out like that. Shows that there's more arm coming down here. All right. Well, that looks pretty good. Now on this strip up here at the top, this part right here. You'll see, oh, Judy's got the camera up here, all these little fringe fringes coming down the side, not the chain, but the little fringes. I don't carve those, and I'll show you here in just a minute how I get that effect after I cut in here to there. Cut in here, across the top. bottom. What else? Okay, so we'll do the fringe, the, the folds now of the blanket. So we're just going to come down here like this and just kind of real lightly let it just drift out there.
And make that one a little deeper. Place it down on the bottom here. Hard work. <laughs> This is going to be a Hudson's Bay point blanket. If you don't know what that is, you ought to look it up. It's a very interesting story about points on their blankets. Back then, you can still buy them too, by the way.
too many chisels around here. I don't know which one to, to grab. Right here in this area is where the grain changes. That looks pretty nice. Anyway, on the blanket, there's going to be stripes coming across here. Doubt if any points will show. Although I might put some down, down in here. We'll just have to wait and see. Hey, it's looking pretty good. If I do say so myself. So, for next time, I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, well, I think in the next video what we'll do is we'll work work on this area right up here where his neckerchief is and get that to working. And that will basically be it. Oh yeah, I was going to show you how to do the little fringes along the edge of that. Turn on my heat gun here. Just take it and we we'll just draw and I turn it around. And that where they bleed out down there, I'll just put a little heavier burn mark. And it makes a nice little detail. I'm going to change some of these. You get the same effect because paint won't paint won't stick in these areas when I paint it. It'll just crawl away from it. So they'll come out real strong. And it looks real nice. So I think we're just about finished. Except for that neckerchief with this. And I think he looks pretty good. Let me get him down here in the dark so you can see him a little better. There we go. Coming along nice. So, until next time, I'll talk to you later.